Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our live stream, Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor, and yes, I am live today. Last week, I was not here uh, because I was in Tampa. Uh, was, it, was, it, was it two weeks ago? It was two weeks ago. So I was live last week. Yeah. Uh, I was live last week, and I'm live this week. Thank you, Joey. Yeah. By the way, my... Um, my producer, Joey, is riding side saddle with me. Say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. There we go. So we got a great show for you today. I feel like Ed Sullivan. We got a really, really, really good show for you today. Yes. And if you can hear me loud and clear, by all means, please respond in the affirmative, preferably with VV Nation, to let me know that I am coming across loud and clear across the world. You know, we got people in here from all over the globe uh, here for Trending Thursday, which is an awesome thing that we have a reach around the world uh, for people to, to come and take and check, uh, take a look at Trending Thursday. Don't forget, um, if you are brand new to the channel, please, please subscribe to the channel. We have a subscriber goal this year, and we really want to hit it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I just want you to subscribe to the channel. Please do. Um, and if you like the content that you see here, hit the like button because the more you do that, the more the YouTube algorithm shares this video. So if you really want to get this content to go out to everybody across the YouTube channel, by all means, please, please hit the like button. And if you hit the dislike button, Joey's going to put you in timeout. So there. All right. Right, Joey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joey says he's going to put you in timeout. So again, thank you guys for being here. This is our live stream channel, so this is not our regular channel. And you guys have found your way to our new live stream channel. Kudos to you. My hats go off to you. Share this so that other people are now linked up to our, uh, our live stream channel as well. So things like Trending Thursday, the Hot Stock panel, which is next week. Uh, we have another Hot Stock panel for the month of June. Stan Heller will be one of our panelists. So for all of you who are in Canada, uh, he will be talking about three Canadian stocks on our hot stock panel. Uh, Todd and myself will also be there. We'll give you a couple of picks for our hot stock panel. Uh, what is it, low price stocks? Something along the... No, it's not which one. No, uh, that was the March one. Yeah, I, I think it's low price stocks uh, to get in to take advantage of, I believe. So um, we'll take a look. Be sure to be here as well. Sit, hit the bell icon for this channel so that you'll be alerted. And when we send out our alerts for all of you guys to come on board, that's the best way to never miss an event on either channel. Hit the bell icon. That way you will be alerted. And I watched all of the new people that just joined us because they hit their alerts. Uh, I love sending out those alerts. All right. So all of the people that are here, I'm looking at all of the chat. You got, I'm not pimping. Who says I'm pimping? Somebody says I'm pimping. Am I, how am I pimping? Man, I'm not pimping. I got an alert from the stock advisory to watch. That's right, Shecky. That's why you need to hit the bell icon so that you can be alerted. Uh, best stock app, hands down. I made some really good money because of it. Thank you for that, uh, Nezhneels. I appreciate it. Hopefully I said that correctly, Nezhneel. Jay, Jay took a picture. Let me see that. Jay took a picture. Why do you do this, Jay? He took a picture and sent it. I moved it. There it is. He got me looking like I'm all high and stuff. What did you do that for, Jay? So, it, no, we come across, come across on, uh, as you see, on a phone. So, Jay, why do, why do you do that? Jay is a little strange. I love you, Jay. I love you, Jay. All right. So, um, let's get into it. I got a lot of good stories for you today. Always start off with what's going on in the market because, you know, that's important, especially with inflation in place. So I want to talk a little bit more about inflation and how it's affecting the market and how it's also beginning to look like it's beginning to look a lot like inflation may start to hurt the market. Yes, we got to we got to patent that so that nobody else can take that. All right. So we're, we're going to start off by looking. We're going to start off by looking into what's going on in the market. So here we go. Here's our homepage. All right. And for those of you who do not have a subscription to the software, I never try to sell the software here. But I will tell you that if you want access to the VectorVest software that I show here, the VectorVest system, 99 cents will get you a 30-day trial. 99 cents will get you a 30-day trial. Look below this video. You will see a link 
for a 30-day trial for 99 cents. We do that for you guys here on uh, YouTube, all right? So this is what's going on. All uh, right now, you see that we are have, we have a mixture in the market. The Dow is slightly up. The, everything was down today, and I'm going to show you some of that uh, that we don't normally show. I'm going to show you some inter, uh, intraday activity as well. So as I can see, the Dow is up, but the other major indices are down. It looks like the Nasdaq, the tech side of the market, is down the most, down about three quarters of a percent. Our vector vest composite, which tracks the move of over 8,700 stocks, is down about a half a percent. So we we have a mixed market today. If we look at our color guard, which is what we like to say, you know, our traffic light into the market, a lot of green, a lot of yellow. I'm going to tell you that even though the market is going up, just be careful. All right. Uh, just be careful. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 greens. We've got more green lights than yellows. So I'm still going to tell you to be careful. Nonetheless, our primary wave is up. If you want to know more about what this color guard means and how it works, if you take the subscription, the trial for 99 cents, we have something called the Daily Color Guard Report where we go into deep detail of what all of this means. But from a traffic light perspective, more green than yellow, but I'm still going to tell you to be careful. Now, let's talk about what's happening in the market and let's get to my first story. And where is, oh, I didn't put these in the order, did I? Son of a gun. Hold on. Sit right there. Me let me put these, I know, let me put these into order so that you can see what's going on. All right, da 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 da, -da. I'll, I'll figure out everything else right now. But let's start with um, the first story. And the first story talks about inflation. U.S. inflation surges to a 13-year high, and consumers are paying the price. I got a little, a little sketch, a sketch, sketch that I'm going to put up about inflation, and to tell you why it's very important. I look at what the Fed says. The Fed says that inflation is transitory. Uh, the bank, central bank, says they have tools to overcome inflation. But inflation is the product of, a, of, of, a, of a, a bustling, hustling, bustling market. And that's great. So it is the bad side of a good thing. Because as the market runs, prices run higher, inflation increases. Inflation increases, though, people are going to have to pay higher prices for things. And one of the things that I've said on more than one occasion is that one of two things is going to happen. The Fed is either going to have to raise interest rates to stave off the hot economy, or people are going to say, listen, I'm not going to spend all of this money for goods because inflation is so high, and that's going to slow down the economy as well. So inflation surges to a 13-year high, but the other side, U.S. economic activity picked up in spring, the Fed, uh, the Beige Book says. All right, well, that makes sense. With the market running and inflation running, economic activity picked up. Why? Because there was a lot of stimulus that was put out into the market or put out into the economy to spur up the market, to keep the market going. Nobody wants to be the person that slows down the economy. But at some point in time, it's got to happen. Just think about that. At some point in time, it's got to happen. I don't know when, and I don't know how severe the pullback will be. But with the more the market gets overextended, the stronger the pullback is going to be. Now, I'm all, not about doom and gloom. All right? Don't get it wrong. Um, it's not about doom, doom and gloom, but I'm just preparing you. Julian says it's only transitory. All right. Uh, I got something that talks about that a little bit in a second here. Here's another one. Here it is. You talked about that, Julian. U.S. inflation is transitory, but could become more persistent, says the ex-Fed official Dudley. So, Julian, I'm glad you said that, and I had a story that goes right along with that. Former New York Fed President William Dudley said the recent spike in U.S. inflation is, a, is likely transitory for now but could become more persistent in the coming years. Dudley said more people must be employed. Aha, uh -huh, key words there. Must be employed before the U.S. faces a labor constraint that feeds through to inflation more persistently. What's happening with unemployment? A lot of people are still on unemployment, even though the benefits are going to run out soon, all right? And they're going to have to, if they're not going to get the unemployment benefits, they have to go back to work. There's a lot of places, especially in the service industry, who are looking for people. 
Have you gone to any place to eat and it's taken a long time to get the food because they're understaffed? I'm I'm experiencing that too because they can't get people because people are making more on unemployment than they are working. But once the unemployment benefits decrease back down to where they normally were, people will start to go back to work. He also said that he thinks that the Fed will discuss when to start winding down asset purchases by the end of the year. I did have a story, but I took it out, that uh, one of the Fed officials was saying that they were thinking about um, – going back over how much bonds to buy, all right? So those are the things that are going to come into place if the Fed stops buying up as much debt, that's gonna affect the market to the, to the, to the downside as well. Mike says, what do you think will happen on 9-6, September 6, when the last unemployment stimulus goes out? Think pandemonium? No, Mike, not at all. I think that people will go out and get those jobs that are out there. And there's a lot of jobs out there. Nobody should be at a lack for finding a job. Now, there's a difference between saying that at a lack of finding a job and finding a job that pays them well. All right. And I think that as uh, Congress goes through the fact that they want to go through and raise the minimum wage, uh, the minimum wage. Uh, that's going to bode heavy on the market as well as people go back to work and getting a better, a, a better salary. So before we get into our market timing graph, I wanted to show something else. This is my little picture that I came up with inflation. All right. Inflation, prices rise over time. You look at houses, you look at cars, you look at electronics, all going up. What does it cause? What does it do? It causes a strong economy. Right? And that's great. The economy is still rocking and rolling, especially this is what was needed coming out of a pandemic. We need the economy to be running. But um, energy prices go up. As people start to get back out and about, the demand for oil is going to increase. Why? Or energy. Well, no matter what the energy is, because uh, people are going to be more active. And government policy, you know that? There it goes. The government policy with all of the stimulus, with all of the extra for unemployment, that's a lot of money that the government doled out to keep the economy going. So the economy going up at a higher price or going up nicely came at a cost, came at a cost of the government printing a lot of money. Now, it's looking at the CPI, the consumer price index, that's inflation, uh, good or bad, higher paychecks. Well, I don't know. Have you seen a higher paycheck yet? Well, Joey probably did because 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 he's that's why he didn't answer because recently he got promoted. He is officially my producer now, not only by name but by title. So, um, you know, he's he's in that in that in 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 that camp. Um, can help the economy grow, which is happening, and helps borrowers. As a borrower, I'm still borrowing at a lower interest rate because interest rates are still low. So as a borrower, when I go to pay back, I'm okay with that. But what's the negative? Higher expenses. We see that right now as goods go up in price. Now, with all of the stimulus, maybe the stimulus is helping us to stave off those rising prices because we have a little bit more money in our pocket. But there was a lot of people who needed that money to pay bills more so than having it as additional income. So there's two different camps there, right? Um, what else? Too much and bad for lenders. You know, when I say, when I think about bad for lenders, how many of you out there are experiencing the ability to sell your house like that at a much bigger or better price than what you anticipated? I'm seeing that a lot of friends of mine have bought houses sight unseen for more than what was listed just to get into the house. Why? Because still more people are in that work at home mode and they're buying homes where they can have a real home office. And I think that that has been huge. That has been huge. Uh, for the housing boom right now and for cars. Cars are going up. You know, I, I had the mindset that I wanted to buy a Gladiator, all right? I like the Jeep Gladiator, but you know where I'm pushing more to now? What do you think, what vehicle do you think I'm pushing more to now, especially uh, with more electric vehicles? There's only one vehicle that I'm super seriously looking at right now. Anybody? What vehicle do you think, knowing that I have a Ford Excursion, what excursion? No, they don't even make the Excursion anymore. No, a Hummer, really? A Ford Lightning. Sam, you got it. That's what I'm looking for. I am definitely really seriously looking at the new F-150. That vehicle is hot 
And you know something I heard that it can power a home for three days. It can power a freaking home for three days. Now, not Joey's home. Joey's home is too big for that. But it can, that is just freaking amazing. So I am seriously looking at that. And just for transparency, I now own Ford. I own, I don't know how many shares because I can't see on my screen. Um, I, I now own phone, uh, Ford just for, again, for transparency, just to let you know, since I'm talking about it. All right. So, um, there was this fun fact here of being able uh, to look at the, um, um, what's the big sandwich from McDonald's big Mac. big Mac, where you can see what it was like a year ago and what it is now as a way of tracking inflation as well. Check that out. That was just a little fun fact, but I wanted to get some kind of analysis for you, you know, in a fun way to show you how inflation is affecting us and how it's going to effectively at some point in time affect the market. It really, 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 really will. All right. So, um, yeah, a couple of people saying that they are in Ford as well. I I, I like the stock, and I think um, it's got a lot of promise behind it. It looks a lot better than the Tesla. You, ever, you seen the Tesla truck? Ugh, I don't like it. All right, so what's Jade plan for the F-16? Fal- uh, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't fly no plane. I'm not going to learn how to fly no plane. Either, I can stop. drive. Listen. Don't get me started with you. All right. We're going to get back into the software. Let's go take a look. I want to take a look at a couple of things. One, I want to take a look at a market timing graph. And I'm going to show you. Is this this the one I want? I'm going to show you a market timing graph, but I'm going to show it to you intraday. Um, because the market, the market was icky this morning. All right. The market was icky this morning. Let's go to one minute. Let's go to five minute bars current day. The market, look at that pullback to the market this morning. It opened up poopy. That's the technical term. And then, uh, look at you, you in, uh, AMC is falling. I'm in AMC. Uh, I, we, we're gonna talk, oh, we're gonna talk about AMC. Look at the pullback this morning, look at the reversal. We never took out the gap down. Here's the gap down for this morning. We never took out the gap down. This, we don't always do this, but this, today I wanted to show the intraday graph on the vector vest composite. Um, what am I looking at here? A 20 exponential moving average. Notice that the market is moving sideways on our vector vest composite, sitting at a level of resistance at $65.81. So even though the market rebounded nicely um, from this morning's debacle, uh, but the market is tending to move a little bit sideways, we're sitting in a little bit of a channel. Where's my horizontal line? Right about here. Uh, a horizontal channel between the price of 65.81 and the price of 65.68. That's the market intraday today. And again, we don't always talk about the intraday market, but look at that. The bulls are just trying to hold on to push this market higher and higher and higher. And even intraday, the bears still own it today. Right? The bears still have it. But from uh, a market timing perspective, a little bit of a rebound now sitting into a channel until the market closes. We'll see what happens. All right. Now, let's go back to my viewers tab and let's go to the watch list viewer. Let's go find my trending Thursday stocks for today, which is today, six, three. Here's my stocks that we'll talk about today. All right, and I don't have a lot today, and Joey's happy. I don't have a lot of stocks today. I've only got 10 stocks, but the two stocks that I use for market timing are the SPY for the spiders, for those of you who are not VectorVest subscribers, and our VVC, the VectorVest composite, which tracks the move of over 8,700 stocks. We like this from a market timing perspective to see and watch the trend of the market. Let's highlight those two, view the stock graph, and let's go put this on a three-month graph. This is the market over the last three months, folks. Here's the S&P 500. I'm going to take that off. Here's the S&P 500 sitting in a little bit of a channel over the last uh, month or so with a level of support on the S&P, on the spiders at 411.13 and a level of resistance at 422. So here we are, the three and the eight from a trading perspective, are still bullish, looking like they want to turn over, but look at the open candle on the S&P 500 
open candle means that it started at the bottom of the candle and moving up. So even though it's lower than yesterday's close, we still have a rebound going on on the S&P 500 today. So it is trading off of its session lows and we are sitting in the channel. The three and the eight are still bullish. So what am I telling you? I've got a level of resistance at the high here sitting at 422.81. If the market's still gonna have upside, it needs to get out of this channel and break above that level of resistance. And it almost did it a couple of days ago. Look at that. Where did it stop? Right at that level of resistance. That is headwind for the S&P 500. Now, if the market's gonna have more downside, I need to see it break down through these levels of support at 411 and even more at 404. Then the market will have downside, but our, our RT tells us the market is still in an uptrend. Let's look at the S&P 500. I mean, sorry, the VVC. Remember, it tracks the movement of over 8,700 stocks. Same kind of scenario in a bit of a channel. We did have a wedge. We broke out of the wedge to the upside, but never able to take out that high, which is sitting at $66.50. So the market is still moving higher overall, coming off of a low here. But in a channel, in two days, the market is down. That doesn't mean to panic. That means to tighten the stops on the stocks that you own. The market is still bullish, but two days don't make a trend. If it starts to break down below this level of 64.91, which is my current level of support on the VVC, then I, then I get a little worried or just tighten my stops a little bit more. All right, so we looked at what's going on in the market from a market timing perspective. We looked at market timing today, both on an intraday and end of day basis to see where you stand. Right now, both the VVC and the S&P 500 are both at levels of resistance and we are sitting in a channel. This is a time, if nothing else, to just tighten the stops on the stocks that you own. Don't be afraid to buy stocks on up days, but just be careful. Does anybody have any questions in regards to my market timing story? Um, Spider looking for a swing low to 214 and then rebound to the upside. Let me see what you're saying, Michael. Let's go back to the spiders. Let's go view the stock graph. Let's put it on three month. What am I at? I do have a swing low sitting at about 404, or if you're looking at this one now, 411. That's gonna be a telling sign if the if the spiders are gonna bounce off of that or move down like they did here. Uh, they did move down, created another level of support sitting at 404. So we'll see. As far as stocks that you're typing into the room, wait until the end of the session. I will take a look at your stocks uh, at the end of the session. All right. Uh, anybody have any other questions in regards to um, my market timing? How much is the software per month? Um, you know, give our product support staff a call, Brandon, because I do not want to give out wrong prices unless someone in the room in VV Nation will help you out, Brandon. All right. Um, and again, all of the stocks that are coming up for me to take a look at. I will do that at the end of the session. This morning, trash my weekly SPX spread. I should have waited before getting out. So, Roger, this is why you don't base your trades off of intraday, especially if you're holding a stock longer term. All right? Think about that. You don't get rid of your stocks intraday. Intraday can present to you noise. Always wait for the end of day. Does that make sense, Roger? Especially if it's a stock that you're trying to hold longer term, always wait for the end of the day to make a, a decision. And if you're paying $4.99 a month, that's probably just on the mobile app, Jake. That's just on the mobile app. One more question. Uh, can you explain what you mean by volume in AMC, which is only by... Rista, who makes the volume? People buying the stock makes the volume. The buyers and the sellers is where the volume comes from. Uh, in order to have a buyer, you have to have a seller. And if you have a seller, you have to have a buyer. Volume, as I did in my AMC video yesterday, uh, was humongous. A lot of that was not retail investors because the retail investors hold the majority of the shares of the float of the stock. A lot of that movement was big money, institutional investing, whether they were buying long or selling short, that's where the volume came from. All right, that's and that was yesterday. That was the video that I did yesterday on AMC, showed what the average volume was and what the actual volume was for the day. That's exactly right. Um, uh, it's a vertical spread per the paycheck class. I got you. 
Okay. So if I subscribe, do we get any notification for stocks to buy and sell? And some month, uh, some enough, um, you can set that up to a certain degree, to a certain degree. But to say that, hey, go buy this stock, buy, sell that stock, to a certain degree, we have something called the watchdog that will set up alerts for individual stocks for you. Why is buying at the end of the day the best? Uh, buying or selling at the end of the day lets the noise settle throughout the day before you make a trade. All right, that's why. And the two most volatile times in the market, the first half an hour of the market open and the last half an hour of the market close. But if I'm going to make a decision on a longer term play, let the end of day graph graph set me up for what to do. If I'm trading a stock, then yes, I look at the intraday graph. But if I'm looking long term, let the end of day data dictate what you do or don't do. All right, so that's all my questions for the market timing. I'm gonna close that out and let's get into my next story. And I didn't set my stories up right, but my next story is about um, coronavirus. So I got a couple of stories here for that. Uh, we all know that uh, Pfizer put in their request for FDA approval. Moderna now files for full FDA approval of its COVID 19s for Americans 18 and older. So now it's great that they filed. So we got three companies that are out there as far as um, vaccines. We have Pfizer with BioNTech. Uh, we have Moderna and we have Johnson & Johnson. And I believe Johnson & Johnson is still on hold in the U.S. All right. Still on hold in the U.S. But now two out of the three, Pfizer already filed, Moderna already filed. Filing is one thing. Getting the approval is another thing. These two companies are going to have to go through a whole lot of bells, whistles, hoops, hollers, and all of that to get to the point of getting FDA approval because the FDA is going to require so much more testing and results before they give it an FDA approval. So knowing that they filed is a good thing. Waiting for the approval is going to be another whole thing, but that doesn't stop them from still being used at this particular point in time. All right, they're still used for emergency usage. Um, next Monday is when I get my second shot of the Pfizer vaccine, uh, just before I go to Guatemala. Um, so I'll be fully vaccinated. And you know something? There's, you know, I saw that 50% of the population, of the U.S. population, is partially vaccinated and 40% of the population is fully vaccinated. Now, however you feel about the vaccination, that's all on you. I am not here to push the vaccination or tell you why is he up here or not to, to, to take the vaccination. It's all on you. Uh, you do what you feel is best for you. I'm just giving you the numbers. I'm telling you how many people are, um, are who did that? Oh, it's the night bot got somebody. All right. How many of, you know, how many people are vaccinated, whether it's fully or partially? All right. Um, so with that, I got another story. Pfizer and BioNTech received the first, first authorizations in the European Union for COVID vaccines in adolescence. That's the next step. All right. So now Pfizer and BioNTech together have their vaccine. Now they've been approved for authorization in adolescence. I don't know how I feel about it in adolescence yet. Um, and that's just a personal thing. And that, that, that for me strictly is personal. Um, hold on a second. I got to sneeze. Ooh, hold on. Excuse me. All right. Took care of that. Sorry about that. That's what happens on live TV, folks. All right. <laughs> That's what happens on live TV. How come I never see anybody ever cough or sneeze on TV? Why just me? Just you. Am I an amateur or something like that? You are. Yeah, what? All right. There we go. So thank you, Michael. I'm getting the bless you's. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Finally, CTRM got reverse split. Asif, if you look at our other YouTube channel, I did a midday. Um, what's the word I use? Probably parlay on CTRM. It's got a lot of views on it. Go check it out. Go check it out. Talk specifically about the reverse split, of which I own. That's another stock I own. I'm down about 47% in it. It is what it is. Um, so I, I still feel good about the CTRM stock. Um, so um, that's just me personally. And I, yes, I do own that stock as well. 
coronavirus vaccine side effects. You know, and that's what the FDA is going to be looking at before they give either one of these companies FDA approval. You're absolutely right, Lou, is you're going to have to, they're going to see, we're not going to know what the, at what the side effects are going to be for years. We're not going to know what the side effects of the vaccines are going to be for years. So uh, is there a good option screener on vector vests? And Mark, we've got a tool called the Options Pro that's great for that. But I'm going to tell you this. If you know the type of stock, to, what kind of trade you're looking for, if you're looking for calls or puts, look for good quality stocks in the vector vest software um, or bad quality stocks for puts. Uh, for spreads, you know, again, you're looking for good quality stocks and they're either going to go up or down. The software can find you the types of stocks to put into those different types of options plays. Why do I get a strange warnings, but I'm ignored on my questions? Ulrich, I just read that. Um, you see how many people are in the room, Ulrich? All right, I'm trying to do the best that I can to answer as many questions as I can. Listen, if I don't answer your questions, I, if, I don't, if, if I don't answer your questions, don't take it personally. Joey helps me out by looking, helping me to flag questions that I may be missing and all that kind of stuff. Please don't take it personally. There's a lot of people in here typing in the room, and I'm trying to do the best that I can. Uh, to, no, he's not on the naughty list, Maria. <laughs> I didn't put him on the naughty list. Huh? Nightbot did say that he put him on because he was. Oh, put Lou? I mean. Um, That's what he said, right? Oh, Nightbot put Ulrich on the naughty list. Stop spamming caps. Oh, when you type, don't type in caps. Nightbot will catch you. So it's not me. It's not me. It is um, the, the software will catch you. The software will catch you. Uh, Roger says TD Ameritrade has great tools for options trading. And, you know, I, am, I think that we're a good one-stop source for everything, but I will never tell you to only use VectorVest. If you've got tools out there that work for you, use them. Use them, but use VectorVest in accordance with them as well. All right, so those are my two stories on um, the coronavirus stocks. I'm going to get back into the software. Look at this. So for those of you who are new, I'm only looking at 10 stocks today in my list, but these stocks are sorted by our master indicator, VST. So the stocks that have the best combination of value, safety, and timing will automatically migrate to the top of the list, and the ones that have the worst combination will go to the bottom. Notice that as I look at these two stocks, MRNA, BNTX, um, and I've got Pfizer in here too. Notice that the top two stocks in my list of stocks today are Moderna and BNTX. Pfizer's towards the bottom, um, but nonetheless, a, a decent stock as well in this space. So I'm looking at three stocks. Um, let's analyze them by looking at the graphs. Let's put this on a three-month graph. Wow, look at Moderna. How many of you have known that Moderna was my favorite stock throughout all of the coronavirus? I think that it was a good quality pharmaceutical that was undervalued. That was key for me, that it was an undervalued stock. Uh, why do you not consider J&J, Johnson & Johnson as a manufacturer as well? Um, because what happened with Johnson and uh, with Johnson and Johnson? Are they still active, Birch, in the U.S. yet? Have they gone back yet to being active? Or are they still on hold? I think they went back active in the European market. They went back active in the European market, but I think in the U.S. market they are still on hold. They are still on hold. Roger says I called it right on mRNA. Um, there you go. And Jake says, J&J &J is no good. They are throwing blood clots. So you notice that I talked about three of them. Only one of them is not active right now. And AstraZeneca, I thought, was going to be the next one to come out. They're not there yet as being approved for emergency usage yet. But mRNA, if you every time we talk about this stock, it's one of the best stocks in my watch list of stocks. All right, and the question is, is it still good to buy mRNA? My suggestion is, one, you wait for the day where the stock is going up, and because it's $197, I would go 12 cents higher than the high to make sure I'm buying in at the right time. A couple of things I like about Moderna most recently. It broke above a level of resistance at 189.13. It did it yesterday and followed through today, hitting a new all-time three-month high. Relative timing is moving. The volume is pretty steady. 
If you're going to buy in the mRNA, make sure you're buying on a rising day and you buy at least 12 cents higher than the high to make sure that the stock is doing exactly what you want it to do, which is go up in price. All right, Johnson Johnson is on hold in a lot of other countries, but I know mixed videos that it is, it has been uh, brought back to fruition in the European market. What is your setting for support and resistance? Um, if I go over to my support and resistance and, and go over to change settings, because I am a more active trader, I look at 100 bars instead of 300 bars, and that's the only thing that I really change, so that's my settings, is that I look at a shorter time period to give me a more accurate accounting of what's going on now. Does that make sense, Asif? That's what I. That's the only change. So I like Moderna, 12 cents higher than the high. What else? There's Biotech, same kind of scenario. I love that it's not sitting as much in the channel, moving high over the last three months, new three-month high, RT is rock and rolling. The volume is not not nearly as um, as committal, uh, I'll say it that way, than, than I have with Moderna. Volume is, is okay. It's still almost 2 million shares a day. Um, but if I go back to Moderna, that's a lot more shares. That's a lot more shares. And volume is conviction. But I do like the equity curve of the biotech. And then we look at Pfizer. Pfizer, though, Pfizer just recently started going up, hit a level of resistance at 4109, pulled back from a trade perspective. The 388 just went negative on 525. That would have been a great opportunity to get out of the stock to capture some of the profit that you had back here. So, what am I looking for now? I'm looking for a couple of things. One, I'm looking for the 388 to cross back up. Two, if it does relatively soon, my uh, high price here is probably going to be my first profit target. Or three, wait for confirmation of the, not only the 388, but the stock to break above on the level of resistance to show more continuation of what we're movement. Notice that as the stock's price fell, RT fell still above one and now starting to rebound. And there we go. Any questions? Any questions on my... Um, coronavirus stocks. I'd love to jump into mRNA, but I am going to hope for a dip. It's almost 250% this year. Might miss the train, but I got to play it safe. And you know, Lakeland, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. You know something? Instead of buying now, what is the goal? The goal is always to buy low and sell high. And Lakeland, look at this. Look at this run up to a level of resistance. Watch the 3.8 cross. Great opportunity to wait, wait, wait. Let it find a floor, which it did. Wait for the 3.8 in, in Lakeland. That would have been a great buying opportunity, wouldn't it? Right there, that would have been a great buying opportunity where on an end-of-day basis, the 3 cross above the 8. There you go. Lakeland. Answer me on that. Would that have been a good buying opportunity? Anybody in the room? Definitely, 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 definitely. And maybe you wait now for a stock to possibly pull back. Um, and we'll see. You know, and what do you see? Mark says, yes, that's a great opportunity. I love looking at end of day, especially if I'm trying to get into a stock a little longer. Look at the bounce here. Look at the 3.8 cross here. Look at that run up. That would have been a good opportunity to get out. Look at that bounce there. Look at that. Look at that run up. All right. So looking at end of day data helps me really make a decision. Any other questions on my coronavirus stocks? Any other questions? Did you really say funky cold, funky cold Moderna? I like that. I like that. Um, CTR was a sell back. Okay. Thank you, Lou, for talking to each other. Is MRA a good long term hold? I think that because the uh, it's a vaccine. It's a under, look how nicely undervalued it is. It is optionable, good upside potential over the next one to three years. It's a safe stock that's going up in price. It's got an earnings per share of eleven dollars, and they grow it by a, 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 um, a factor of fifty six percent a year. Yeah, I like Moderna. I've liked Moderna. Everybody in this chat knows that I've liked Moderna as my best stock as coronavirus. All right, Johnson and Johnson has not had a hold for several. Uh, has not held it. Uh, clots were two ten thousandths of one percent. But curious, it's still not active in the U.S. It's still not active in the, in the U.S. as of right now. All right, let's get to my next story. My next story is talking about what everybody wants to talk about, AMC. All right, so let's start with AMC over here. No. Movie theaters to make a comeback over Memorial Day weekend, ranking, raking in nearly $100 million. Now, this is movie theaters as a whole. We all know that AMC 
is the biggest movie theater in the United States. What hurt it the most was the COVID, uh, that, uh, the COVID pandemic. The stock's price went down. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. The stock's price went down because it was affected. They had to close movie theaters. There's a lot going on with AMC. It's got nothing to do with the fundamentals. All right? I just put out a video yesterday. If you haven't already gone to see it, please do. Uh, please comment. I want to hear what your comments are because I knew I was going to get a lot of backlash in regards to that video. I knew it when I first put it out because there's a lot of people for the terminology that's out there that are diamond hands. There's a lot of people who are diamond hands on AMC. All right. So with that, I'm not a diamond hand, but I'm not a paper hand. I'm a realistic hand. I looked at my account yesterday and at the time I did the video, I was up 490%. By the time I finished doing the video throughout the day, the stock had gone up 600%. Now, I don't care who you are. If you're an investor in the market, what's your goal when you invest in the market? To make money. I made a buttload of money on AMC. I had 500 shares. I took off 250 shares and locked in that profit. Now, a lot of people are saying, no, man, that means you're giving it to the hedge fund so that they can short it more and push it down. Listen, I made a lot of money on that trade. How many of you can say that you've had a gainer of over 100% more than count on, on your hand in your lifetime? If I can make a 20, 30, 40% move on the stock, I'm taking it. When I make triple digits on the stock, I'm taking it. Now, I still got 250 shares more in my account. So if this stock goes up to what everybody is talking about, everybody's talking about how this stock is going to go up to $1,000, $5,000, $10,000. My only statement from a realistic standpoint is, can the stock's price maintain that? All right, that, that's just a question. Well, no, it's not all about that, Glenn. It's all about these hedge funds are going to have to cover all of these massive shorts, all of these synthetic stocks that are out there that they don't own. If we hold the stock, they're going to have to buy it back at those higher prices. Are they? You know what's going to happen? People like me, and I'm not the diamond hands, I'm going to take my profit. Do you not think that today's activity shows that a ton of people are taking their profits, the retail investors. And then you got the apes, the apes that are out there saying, no, 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 we're going to hold and we're going to make them buy back at our, our, at our prices. Do you think you can maybe do that? And if you do, I'm, I'm all on board. I still got 250 shares. I'm all on board with that. But I took some profit because I made some freaking good money on the trade, pat myself on the back and keep moving on. That doesn't make me a bad person because there's a lot of people out there that are saying that. You're crazy because you got peanuts. I like my peanuts. And, and that's a realistic view. When you're in the market to make money, what do you do? You need to know when to buy, what to buy, and when to sell. Now, I did not, I'm not totally out of the trade. I'm not at all. But that was a good chunk of change that I made on a historic stock that could go up all of that. I, I just don't know if the stock can maintain that price. And if it does, oh, I'm still in the game. I am still in the game. All right. So we don't trade out if principle we trade to make money, right? Uh, listen. I'm all about making money, and I'm sure that you guys are not here just to hear me talk about nothing. You're trying to find ways to make money in the market. That was the purpose of that video. And again, if you haven't watched it, go to our other channel, watch that video, folks. I try to keep everything that I say as real as possible. You've heard me say this before. I say what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And I'm looking at a lot of YouTube people that are saying the things that a lot of people want to hear. I don't want to do that. I'd, I'd be selling you short if I did that. Let me make you look behind what's going on, all right? So, um, another one. AMC surges on deal with Mudrick. Now, interesting about this. I'll get this off my screen. Um, Mudrick went and bought a whole bunch of shares, and then they sold them. 
and they sold all of those shares, and a lot of people are saying that it gave the hedge funds more stocks to sell short. Possibly did. And I am of the mindset, I understand the difference between the retail investor and the hedge funds. And I think that there needs to be something in place that says you can't short more than X amount of percent of a company. Now, I understand what the short squeeze is. And a lot of companies, a lot of people will short a stock. A lot of hedge funds will short a stock because they feel that the stock is not worth it. That's what happened to Toys R Us. That's what happened to Radio Shack. They, they succumb to the, you know, and if, if a hedge fund most likely is shorting a stock, it's for a reason. All right, so now let's talk about that. And here's the, the cool, the funny side of this. Here's the funny side of this. AMC plans to reward retail investors with free popcorn and exclusive screenings. I think that's kind of funny, uh, but it is what it is. And so let, I want to talk about, I want to spend some time and talk about just what I said about AMC. Notice that AMC is in the top three of the 10 stocks that are in here. Again, the stock, I'm not looking at the fundamentals on the stock in any way, shape, form, or fashion because that's not what this is all about. I want to show you something. View the stock graph. I'm going to put this on a six-month graph. And I want to show you, prior to all of this, the graph layouts, prior to all of this, this COVID hit, boom, 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 fall down, all of this happened with the, um, the hedge fund shorting the stock. Remember in, in the beginning, it jumped up in January, fell down, stayed, 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 and most recently ran back up. This is a 20-day exponential moving average, all right? Sales growth is interesting. Sales are going down, but sales growth is, is, is rising. It's got to catch up to the sales. With the, with, the mar with the movie theaters closing down, sales aren't there. All right, I'm going to put this on a one-year graph. And prior to all of this, prior to all of the short squeeze and all of that stuff, look at what was going on with AMC. So maybe, maybe the hedge funds had something to say, wait a minute, the company is losing money. And this is prior to all of the COVID stuff, uh, August 2020, it, it, it started there. Look at all of that. Let's go put this on a five-year graph. <laughs> Look at the and look at the look at the stock's price. This is way before COVID. Even though it's the largest movie theater in the United States, this is all prior COVID. Do you not think that the hedge fund saw something to say the company's not making money? Let's go short it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not on board with way overshorting the company. But look at AMC. This is 2017, 2018, 2019. What was AMC doing? Now, with all of that being said, with all of the move going on with AMC, do they have the wherewithal to maintain that stock price? Think about that. All right, do they have the wherewithal? And you know, I'm I'm going to I'm going to say that Joey may cut this out to put it as another video like he did behind my back on another video. You did that. I cut out all, all, every video. Oh, do you really? Everyone. Oh, wow. All right. <clears throat> Joey and I are really going to fight today. A lot of talking. What, I, what scares me about AMC is the parabolic move. That's two days way up. Look at the rebound today. Uh, look at the pullback today. Let's go put this on to intraday, five-minute bars, current day. Let's look at it today. The stock did have the wherewithal to pull back up. Why? Because this, you know what's driving? Somebody tell me what this is. It's four letters. What is this right here, intraday? Four letters. What's that right there? I know you know it. I know you know it. What is that right there? Somebody? Somebody? I know you know it. I hope the Nightbot doesn't shut them down for saying it. FOMO, there it is. FOMO, fear of missing out. Hype is another. I, I'll take hype as well. But what hasn't happened yet? What hasn't happened yet? All right, so that's intraday. I showed you end today. I'm going to bring up another story because I want you to see something. I'm going to go out to Yahoo. 
He doesn't have Yahoo up here. Let's go out to Yahoo Finance. Yeah, you normally should have it up here. You should have everything that I have. Go to Yahoo Finance, and I'm going to look up AMC, and I want to show you something on it because a lot of people have said that the spread, uh, that, this, um, that the squeeze hasn't happened yet. Let's go to financials. Is that what I'm looking for? No. What am I looking for? Is it the profile? Uh, statistics. Statistics is what I'm looking for. Statistics. This is what I want you to keep your eyes on. See right here? There's still a 21% float on the short side. There's still a... T so that means that maybe the squeeze hasn't happened. That's a lot of short float on AMC. So there's two sides to the picture here on AMC. One, if you believe in the movement and you are the diamond hands and you're going to bring the hedge funds to their knees, stay in the stock. For those of you who are wondering if you should get into it or not, I'm going to tell you, be careful. And if you're going to buy it, make sure you buy it on a rising day when the stock is rising. But for a combination of the two, if the short float is still as high as it is and the squeeze hasn't happened, theoretically, and I want you to listen to this. Come here. Come here. Theoretically, on paper, the stock has got huge potential to the upside. Now, for those of you who are going to put your life savings in it, I'm not going to tell you to do that. Could you have an opportunity to make life-changing money? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But when you've got that feeling that says, I'm afraid to buy it because it's so high, listen to that. This trade is not for everybody. And the trade is only for the people who either, one, really believe in the movement, or two, really know how to get in and get out at the right time. I need everybody in this room to answer this question. Do you understand what I just said? I need everybody to answer that, because that will put a full bow on the whole topic coming from Glenn. That will put a full bow on, I am not telling anybody not to buy it. I am not telling any of you to sell it. I'm not saying anything to push it either way. I am keeping this so real that you can't help but to make the right decision for yourself. All right, so, so and, and Patrick is saying, so you're saying to YOLO a second mortgage on it? Heck no. You know I just said that. I just want you guys to be careful. I'm saying that theoretically on paper, this has the ability to make a boatload of money. So does GME. But you got to believe in what you, and you got to stand for it, and you got you to take the bumps and the bruises with it. You got to take the bumps and the bruises. If you can't do that, then you don't need to be in the trade. All right? So now, and Mike says, so Glenn said, go in, all right. That was on May 14th. I know, this is on May 14th. So guess what? This number could definitely be different. All right, this is all that I've got from Yahoo Finance right now. That number could be higher or lower, don't know. The number could be higher or lower. All I'm saying is even at that number, even if it's a little lower than that, there's still a big short float out there. And I am in agreement that the, that the squeeze hasn't happened yet. That goes for both this stock and for GME. Now, when it comes to GME, and I know Patrick's in the room, I don't know if it's going to have the move like AMC has because it's a lot more of an expensive stock. The retail, and let's look at the retail investor. The retail investor ain't got that kind of money to pay $300 for that stock, whereas a lot more people can pay could have paid, I'm in uh, AMC at $9.85. Retail investor could jump on board with that. The real retail investor ain't got that kind of money to throw a lot of money behind GME. So I don't know if GME is going to have as big a move, but it's in the same space of being overshorted. And I acknowledge that on both stocks. All right, so that's my full everything transparency on amc you can take it 
or leave it, that's totally up to you. But I am not going to hype it up. I am not that guy on YouTube to do that. I am not telling you to be the diamond hands. I'm not telling you. I, listen, if you've made money on the stock, don't be afraid to take some of that off the table. That's my opinion. That's totally my opinion. All right. So, and, and, P, and, and Patrick says, GME, that's cute. Hold my beer. Hey, Patrick's big on GME. I'm bigger on the AMC, even though I've got them both. Patrick is way big on the GME. I am bigger on the AMC. So there we go. Um, that short float as of AMC is lower percentage than what GME had when it squeezed. I don't think GME squeezed yet either. Chris, I, I, I'm, I don't think either one of them has squeezed yet. Uh, almost three weeks old. And Larry, I know, but that's all that I could get from Yahoo. Can anybody, since everybody's telling me how old this is, can somebody give me an updated short ratio or short float on AMC? Put it out there for me. Everybody's beating up on me. They're talking about um, uh, that these are old. Can somebody give me a more recent number? All right. Just, 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 just let me know. Uh, Glenn, can VectorVest get a float? The answer to that is no. We cannot get a float for you. All right. That's because they are similar to AMC and GME are brothers. Listen, in, in, in this space, they are. I, I spent a lot of time on this today, but I wanted to. I wanted to follow up to the video that I did yesterday, and I super seriously invite you. Please go to our other channel. Look at the video that I did on AMC. Not only that, go to our other channel. Look at the videos Patrick has done on GME. I think the two of us together have really covered this topic. And, and Patrick has come at so many different angles on GME to give you all the analysis that you need. If anybody out there is looking for really good analysis, not just hype, Go to our other channel and look at our videos for both of those. Please do. And once you do, hit the like button on both of those. We really want all of the GME videos, the AMC videos, to get out to everybody so that people have a well-rounded understanding on what's going on with these stocks so that it's not all about, yeah, baby, go get on the bus. Here we go. Time in the edge. Oh, yeah. Oh. Screw that. We want you to have the right information that you need. All right. I can't check teams. Who's he saying? I don't have my teams up. I'm in Joey's, I'm in Joey's uh, profile, Patrick, so I can't see. You have to send it to Joey if you're going to send anything in teams. You got to send it to Joey. All right, so with that, um, let me know in the comments on both Patrick's videos and my videos what you think about it. Go to the other channel and let me know what you, and if you like the content that you see here today so far, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. I'm trying to go a little bit above and beyond, especially on the AMC's topic, to give you guys what you need to know. What you need to know. Hit the like button. I'm sweating a little bit. Oh, and by the way, what's the coffee I said I was drinking? Death, Death Wish. Wish. I'm drinking some Death Wish coffee today. Good googly muggly. Talk about Cafe Bustello on steroids. Any of you ever tried Death Wish coffee? Any of you? Mira. Uh, the link to the other channel should be below this video, isn't it? Yep, the link to the other channel is below this video. All right, uh, $768 profit on AMC. Brad, how about I just clocked in about 14 grand on that trade, and I still own 250 shares. All right, how about I still have 250 shares, and I, cl I clocked out with a $14,000. Um, I clocked out 14 grand. Listen. I don't know how many times you get to make 14 grand in a trade, all right, um, on, on like a $100,000 portfolio. I don't know. I, I'm, t I'm taking it. I'm t so taking it. Uh, I don't know somewhere in YouTube, but I remember that emphasis, Chris. What did you say, Chris? I'm holding AMC strong. Don't get me wrong. AMC to the moon. However, I remember GME was at 140% of float in Jan. Yeah. I, and so I just still don't think, and, and Patrick can answer that question. He's in the room, Chris. I still don't think it, the float, that was a lot. I don't think it's squeezed. Patrick, can you answer that in the room? I don't think it's squeezed. I don't think either one of them squeezed. I think that there's still a big short float out on both of them. All right, let's get to my last story. Woo! Oil. Oil's moving up, and that's that. Okay. 
That's all I'm going to say about oil. Oil hits a one-year high on OPEC. OPEC is at the wheel, folks, on oil. Um, a supply discipline, demand prospects, they're controlling how much oil they're going to put out to stabilize the price. Price is going up because we don't have as much in our surplus. So we're digging into our, into our oil supply. It's going to create a demand, blah, 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 blah. Um, there was another thing. Oh, I missed one. All right, that's another thing. Let's go take a look at oil real quick. I've got one stock that I'm going to look at, which is USO, uh, U.S. Oil Fund ETF. Let's go look at the graph of it, view the stock graph. There's oil over the last three months. You know what I like about it? I like that bounce. I like that bounce, and I cannot lie. Look at that. that look at that. That stock fly. So I like from the bottom left, top left, uh, top right over the last three months. Um, it's a, clearly above my 20 average. Uh, from a trade perspective, let's go put on my trade side. The 3 and the 8 crossed a few days ago. Look at that. The 3 and the 8 crossed on that ETF. Not only crossed, but went above a level of resistance, broke, tested it, and is now still moving. If you're going to jump into oil from this ETF, I would wait until it goes uh, 12 cents higher than the high. But wait a minute. That's just the index, the ETF. I got something for you. Let's go. I'm going to help you out in some oil stocks. Where's Petroleum H? I got a Petroleum watch list for you. And in this Petroleum watch list that I have for my YouTubers, I've got 69 stocks. I'm going to do a couple of things for you real quick. If you want to look for the fastest moving stock in this space right now, sort the list by RT. I'm going to give you three of the fastest moving stocks in the Petroleum EMLC. PTEN and OII, three of the fastest moving stocks in the petroleum industry. Now, let's say you're looking for growth stocks in this space. I'm going to sort by relative value. So these are the stocks that have good upside potential as compared to AAA corporate bond. How about DKL, MGY, DCP? Woo-wee! These stocks should outperform the AAA corporate bond by 49%, 49%, 47%. Really good upside potential on these stocks. And if you're looking for value plays in the oil space, let's sort this by relative safety. Oh, you guys are getting a bonus today. So um, three different ways, and I'm showing you how to find and play the oil space. Valero, the best stock by relative safety. And out of the 69 stocks, folks, this is the only stock that's got a relative safety above one. Keep that in mind from a value play in the oil space. How many of you found that useful from um, the fastest moving to a growth play to a value play and looking at a watch list of 69 stocks? How many of you found that useful? And that goes out specifically to my brand new people in this room. How many of you found that out to be useful? Uh, Somnath says, what are the three best stocks to buy today for long? No, I don't do that. Um, I, I, you know, I track 8,700 stocks. There's a lot of different ways to find me what stock is the best stock. It all depends on the type of investor you are. All right, it all depends on the type of investor. Somebody's saying SLB, it's in the top of the list. It's in the top of the list, sorted by relative safety. I'm with that, but notice the relative safety is close to one, but not above one. Not above one. All right? So I wanted to take you and show you that the petroleum stocks are moving, but I showed you three different ways to hone in on the type of investor you are, whether you're a short-term trader, which um, stocks are moving the fastest, if you're a growth play, which ones had the highest relative value, and from a value play, which ones had the highest relative safety. This is the kind of information that you can get as a subscriber to the VectorVest software. 99 cents for 30 days. So far, if you've liked what you've seen today, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, folks. Hit the like button. How many likes do we have today, Joey? 110. Really? How many people we got in here? Uh, we need to get we need to get at least 200 likes. Folks, this is that kind of information that YouTube doesn't always give. And if you feel that, I mean, uh, I can't make you do it. If you feel that this information it was worth your time to be here, hit the like button for me. All right, do that. Hit the like button for me. All right, with that, I got one more thing. Uh, it's on marijuana stocks. I'm not, I don't even have a story for it. I don't even have a story for it. But I wanted to show six, three. I wanted to show you three things. Uh, 
three different things to look at from the marijuana stocks. There's the ETF for marijuana stocks. I'm going to give you a good growth play. GRWG, that's pretty much a good growth and value play, for this, as a matter of fact. And I'm going to give you a good speculative play, which is Sundial. Let's go take a look at all three of these. All right. From the whole industry, oops, from the whole industry, there's MJ. I like the bounce off support, which is sitting at 1967. But this is what's catching my attention. I love that the 3 and 8 crossed here on... 525, but it's having a hard time getting above this level of resistance of 2158. I would really, I like the bounce. I like the crossover of the three and the eight. I really want to see MJ get above that level of resistance before I go full bore. All right. When I'm ready to go into these stocks, this is one of the best stocks in the space. Grow generation, because I call this the lows of marijuana. Everything that it takes to grow marijuana. The plant is found in this stock. This is a great stock. I like its bounce off support. I like that the 3.8 crossed a few days ago. Also sitting on a level of resistance, having a hard time getting across, which is at 44.11. All right. I'd really like to see that take off. I'm giving you some preliminary stuff to look at right now. So GRWG is a great long-term play. And then my more speculative play is MJ. I'm sorry. Uh, and my more speculative play, there it is, is Sundial. Uh, for the sake of uh, transparency, I now own Sundial as of yesterday. I bought it yesterday. Nice gap up today. Beautiful volume. RT is above one. This could be a good play right now. I've got a level of, um, <coughs> excuse me, a level of a profit target sitting at $1.77 as it's currently trading at one twenty seven. Something to look at. Put this on a six-month graph. Look at that. That's a good level of resistance. Take these off. And there's that high sitting at 396. I think it's got to have a great opportunity to run up again. See when it ran up here? Look at when the 3.8 cross. Right there. Look at that run up, run up, run up. There's the 3.8 crossing to the downside. That would have been a good profit. It went down, 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 down. I like the 3.8 cross, and it could be getting ready to exhibit the same characteristics of going back up here. It is more of a speculative play. So I've given you a good long-term play with GRWG, and I've given you a speculative play with Sundial, but nonetheless, all together, look at MJ, the ETF for the whole industry. Would love to see it go above that value of 21.58 and keep moving up. All right. Asian Any questions? Are they, these are not Canadian companies. These are U.S. companies. USA. USA. All right. Any questions on my marijuana stock? VLO has projected decrease in earnings. GRT. Michael, I'm still going to keep my eye. If the industry is rocking and rolling, guess what? Birds of a feather flock together. VLO being the stock that it is will probably move higher. It all depends. Now, projected earnings. Let's go see what happens with actual earnings. All right. And I got you on that. Uh, how about Potex? I'll take a look at that real quick. That's one. P-O-T-X. Um, this is a theme stock. You know, it looks a lot like MJ. All right. It looks a lot. It's an ETF. It looks a lot like MJ. Right on board with it, Tony. All right. Sundown and GRDD still a good buy as long as you buy in at the right time. What did I just say in regards to both of those stocks? Buy on the higher, buy higher than the most recent high. Always, always, no matter what stock you get into. And preliminarily, I would re we'd really like to see those stocks break out those levels of resistance, as I mentioned as well. All right. Let's close out of that. You know what time it is, right? I'm ready. It's time for me to look at your stocks. Time for me to look at your stocks. Start typing them in. MJNA is a loser. Maria, I, I, listen, MJNA was, a, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at MJNA. I T H U F two low dollar more speculative weed plays as well. All right, N T A P comma R G R comma Tilray. That's another one in that space. Comma Dollar Tree D L T R comma um, Blackberry comma I H X I H X. I think that's L H X L H X. Here we go. Comma Flugent F L G T comma C T R M comma Home Depot. Okay, Home Depot LPX LPX comma Palantir. I like that stock shirt. 
Who gave me shirt? Michael, Payne, is, you want a, is you typing in, you want a shirt? Michael, I'm so mad at you right now. Disney, <laughs> A-P-P-L, comma, uh, A-A-P-L. How do I not know that? How do I not know that? Of all people in the whole wide world, how do I not know that? A-A-P-L, comma, F-N-D, comma, new person, new person. Tyler, O-M-F, I'm looking for another new person. Chris, R-B-L-X. All right, those are my stocks. If... I did not type in your stock. Look down below this video. You'll see a link for a free stock analysis on any stock that we track. All right, on any stock that we track. All right, Sharon is new too. Sharon, I'm going to do that. S, is that S-E-N-S? Sensi? I've done videos on that. I think that that's what that is. All right, Mark's typing in mug. I'm not giving, I, can I give out a mug today? Um, Joey said no. I'll give one. Uh, uh, I'll give one out next week. I'll give one out next week. All right. Apple. As much as I love Apple, you'll always hear me that I'm not in love with Apple. As I look at Apple, what is it in a channel? A resistance level of 126.93, a support level of 122.77. About a uh, about a four dollar channel. Look at where it's at. It's at the lower edge of the channel. Now, what I am looking for, what I do like, what I see is that maybe it's coming to a level of support and it could bounce off of 122.77. What I don't like, RT is below one. Stock's officially in a downtrend while in that channel. So I'm not a very happy camper about jumping on board with Apple at this time. Just be careful if you own it. Your only saving grace is if the stock stays above this level of support, it's okay to still be in it. I would rather you have you out at the three eight cross, but if this is your only saving grace right now, if it breaks down below it on an end of day basis, you probably do not want to keep on holding to that right now. Wait for a better buying opportunity. All right, next one, Disney. And you know something with the coronavirus coming to a point where more and more people are getting vaccinated, Disney is not is not pulling up just quite yet. Let's go to graph layouts. Let's go to my swing trade. It is below the 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings are rising. Earnings growth is rising. I'm going to take off sales right now. Earnings is rising. Earnings growth is rising, but the stock's price is not rising yet. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. I still need to see. You know what's going to be a telling sign for Disney is this summer. As people get out of the house, Joey and his family are getting ready to go on a Disney vacation. I think that this summer is going to be where the rubber meets the road for Disney. If they've got a lot of people going out uh, to the theme parks. When you talk about Apple, do your comments apply also if we're long term? So, yeah, even long term, I'd have to put this on a one year graph. Right now, overall, Apple is moving sideways. Ah, even long term, that's still one level of support sitting at 122.77. I got another level at 119. Long term, if you go below both of those moving averages, even though I love the earnings and the earnings growth rate, if you go below, be careful. At some point, you got to say enough is enough and wait for a better buying opportunity. Does that make sense? Um, who asked me that? Birch, does that make sense? I see that this stock overall, if I take off support and resistance, I'm going to draw my own real quick. Right there and right here. The stock is in a channel. All right, the stock is in a channel. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The stock is in the channel, but it's at the lower edge of the channel and below the 20-day exponential moving average. All right, Rob, I'm not going to pull up uh, another stock for you guys. I got to get through all of these stocks first. Sorry about that. But again, if you go to down below, you'll see the link for our free stock analysis. You'll be able to get that uh, for you. All right, so Birch, does that make sense in your long-term perspective uh, on Apple? Hopefully it does. Let's go to the next stock. Um, we did Disney already. Wow, Home Depot. Lows are really, really good. Should I still hold Disney then? Somnaf, you got to make, what do you think? Think about it. From the high, it's moving down. It's below the 20-day expansion moving average. What do you think? You got Only you can make that decision, Somnaf. I, I am not a financial dude. I can't manage your money. I'm giving you the information to make your own decisions. I do like the earnings per share. I do like the earnings growth. The price action tells me another story right now. I don't know if I want to hold Disney right now based on what I see over the last three months. 
but only you can make that decision. Disney is in the same as AMC. Why is one going up in price with the same earnings for their customers? Ooh, Disney and AMC are not in the same boat. Oh, no, no, no. Disney is not a movement. AMC is a movement of the retail investors against the hedge funds. This ain't that. This is not that at all. Disney is is not that in the same boat. Not at all. So that's that's the difference. All right, let's go to the next stock. I love Home Depot. Right now, it's below the 20 exponential moving average. I do have a level of support sitting right where the stock is right now, about 308. All right, 308.98, that's a good level of support. If it drops down below that and it's below the 20 exponential moving average, again, I like the earnings per share and growth, but price action is telling me to be careful. I don't ever want you to be in a stock that's below a moving average and breaking through a level of support. At that point in time, wait for a, buy, a better buying opportunity. All right, wait for a better buying opportunity. Uh, Raju, you just typed in um, dots. I'm not sure what you're trying to ask me. Uh, and somebody else just typed in a comma. I don't understand none of that. All right, anyway, let's go to the next stock. Um, Sturm Ruger, like that. Leisure products. How many of you have heard me say, especially as a subscriber, keep your eye on leisure products this year? Anything in the leisure space, keep your eyes on. How many of you have heard me talk about that? Type a yes in the room. Why? Because, folks, I need you to know this space is going to move. All right, it's going to move. And uh, Carlos, you typed in all caps. Don't do that. The night bot's going to shut you down. All right? This, the night bot is going to shut you down. Watch the leisure space, folks. Watch the leisure space. Michael, don't type in. Oh, you guys, stop typing in all caps. The night bot's going to shut you down. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> all right. I like this stock. New high today. Nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average. Uh, that's a good looking play right there. I like that. Woo, Dollar Tree. And you know what's interesting about Dollar Tree? Every, everywhere my wife and I drive, there's a Dollar Tree in the middle of nowhere. All right, there's a Dollar Tree in the middle of everywhere. But right now, price action is pulling back. I don't have a definitive answer on this just quite yet. Let me do some research. I might do, I might, where's my list? I might have to do a video on Dollar Tree. Um, DLTR. I might have to do a video. I, I want to find out why it's moving down the way it is. And I will look at this. What I do like, it might have found the floor. Excuse me. Look at that. It might have found the floor. So could you get into it now? Yep. 12 cents higher than the high. What I would really like to see on a longer term uh, perspective is to jump back above the 20 X mention moving average. Or better yet, Let's see if it can break above that level of the gap down, Ooh, which is sitting at 102.42. Let's go see if it can do that. That could show some upside. All right, I'm going to take off the earnings and the earnings growth. I want to just look at volume and the price. But it looks like it might have found a level of a floor. I'd like to see it break above the gap down. All right, what else? Wow, LHX, good stock. Good stock. Bottom left, top right, nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average. Volume is conviction. It looks good. It looks pretty solid all the way around. Even though it's under the normal average volume, look at the bars. The bars are very symmetrical. Nicely above the 20-day. If you're not in it now, let's see if we can take out that high. We're right at it. If you're in it, leave it alone. That's a good-looking stock right here, folks. That is a good-looking stock. Bottom left, top right, nice 45-degree angle. If you're not in it, though, let's see if they can take out that high. If you're in it, that's a good play. Uh, LPX in the wood. Now, wood might get hurt adversely because it's so expensive. It really is expensive. Let me draw a line here. It really is expensive. Be careful with it. This stock was hot, and it was kicking butt and taking names. Would that have been a good opportunity to get out of the stock and take some profits off the table? Yes or no? Would that have been a good opportunity after all of that nice move up? Would that have been a good opportunity? Yes, it would have. And now you could have said, I get back in here. And then look at that. It got moving averages are not good when a stock is moving sideways. It's not good when a stock is moving sideways. So here I would throw on something like uh, stochastics. There we go. I'd probably throw on stochastics to give me a better feel of when the stock is overbought or oversold. Here would have been oversold. I could have, it didn't make a lot of money though. And right now it's normal. Uh, right now though, indecision, definitely below the 20 day exponential moving average. Next stock, 
and tap. I thought it said nap. Uh, what you need. That's what I need. Man, this coffee is no joke, though. Why are you yeah. telling me? I, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to come punch you in the face. Let's go. I'm ready to fight Let's you. Let's get it. All right. End tap. Bottom left, top right. Clearly above the 20-day extension moving average today. A little bit of a pullback with a big wick at the top. A lot of volume. wonder if this was news-driven. Watch this. I click on the news. It's up 2% today. Net taps, quarter four earnings and revenue. Supply. That's what's driving the stock's price today. See how quickly I was able to pull that up? So that was an earnings play. Bingo. There it is. It was an earnings play. Earnings were good. Good volume yesterday and today. What I really like, though, uh, that's just news driven. I'd like to see. Look at where it stopped. Look at where it stopped today, right at that level of resistance of 80.53. This stuff works. That's why I draw these levels for you. All right. That's why I draw these levels for you. Um, let's go to the next stock. BlackBerry, meme stock moving as well, um, overbought right now by way of stochastics. Again, uh, meme stock pulling back, still higher than it was yesterday, but look at all of that give back. Look at all that. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I don't care which one of these meme stocks you're in. You make this kind of money in a short amount of time. The stock's price went from, um, let's do that. The stock's price went from here, 525. It went from a price of 859 jumped up as high as 2017 you don't think that's a hundred percent move you don't think people are taking money there that's on that's going to be on all of these stocks that's going to be on all of these stocks if you're a smart investor and then all of y'all are well you're not a diamond hands no i'm not a diamond hands i'm trying to be a smart investor and make money and grow my portfolio that's what i'm doing and i think a lot of these meme stock people look at the volume 500 million shares 500 freaking million shares. And look at that. All right, so let's just, uh, OMF, one main financial. Let's take off. <laughs> I'm getting so excited about this. I don't know. I'm getting so excited. Anyway, bottom left, top right, a little bit of a sideways move. Um, pull back. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're in it, though, it's above the 20 x bench moving out of it. Leave it alone. If you're not in it, wait. Um, that's what I got to say about that. Uh, wow. Uh, this was another stock that was hot, and it ain't now. This is a three-month view on the stock. I ain't feeling it. I'm not feeling it at all. Below the 20-day expenditure moving average, it bounced out yesterday, but came back down. I got a level of support sitting at this low at about 62.83. If you're in it, if you're still in it, that's going to be your line in the sand. If you're not in it, don't worry. Don't get into it yet. I, I wouldn't Let the stock break through this downtrend first. All right, next stop, at uh, Floor and Decor. Hmm, with the building, new building, people were getting into new floors and stuff like that. And I still think with the, uh, oh, I see what happened with this. This was earnings. Did they miss earnings? Oh, let's go to the news. Something tells me they missed earnings. Scroll down. This was a few days ago. Might be a great pick. Uh, it's a $90 million deal to snap up Spartan surfaces. Uh, they, they're growing. Mergers and acquisitions. Um, that was 28 days ago. They beat quarter one earnings. Hmm. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that might have been back here. They beat earnings, but maybe revenues weren't good. Maybe revenues weren't good. Flojan, if you already hold it, should we be patient and wait for it to go up? Ooh. All right, so remember, I gave you a line in the sand. All right. And this is why I specifically do this so that those questions won't come up. And I'm not saying that to be a jerk, really not. But this is your line in the sand. If you're going to be patient, this is where you're going to be patient up until $62.83. That's your line. And if you already own it, that's a lot of hurt right there. You got to determine when enough is enough. But I'm going to give you a level of when enough should be enough right here at 62.83. All right. That's a lot way more down. Do you really want to sit through that? If you do and you're okay with that, then that's cool. But that's your line in your sand, what I call a litz. All right, let's go to the next stock, MJNA. Maria said that that was not a good stock right now. Maria, I don't disagree with you. Clearly below the 20-day exponential moving average, clearly trending lower. I'm with you, Maria. 
totally with you. I put another one in here, ITHUF. Now, actually, ITHUF, though, look at that. With the marijuana space moving up, I gave you Sundial. ITHUF could be, I'm going to write that down. Now, that one, I might jump on board. I made a lot of money with this stock. Maria, you remember when we made a lot of money in the jockey club with this stock? I, I could be setting that up for a good short-term trade. It's only 22 cents. Keep your eyes on it. Look at the volume behind it, too. Look at the volume behind it. I sort of like that trade right now as a short-term trade coming off a level of support. Maria, you see this? You see this? And look at that. Higher, higher, even higher than the prior day's high. It's still moving up. I, like, I might like this trade again. I might like this trade again, and I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down because I might like it. Um, Tilray, same kind of scenario. Look at the volume behind it. I'm going to write that down. Tilray, these are other stocks in this space. I told you, now you understand why I made this a story. The space is moving. Some of the stocks within the space is moving as well. All right, do I have 200? Did I get 200 likes yet? I still didn't get 200 likes yet. Psy, CTRM, big move today. I'm in it after the reverse split for every... 10 stocks you got, you only have one stock now. That was to keep them um, from being delisted of not hitting the $1 mark. That happened in um, December of last year. They had six months to stay above that level of $1. So they did the reverse split. They're now above that value. Big move up today. Actually, today actually jumped up above the 20 day exponential moving average, but pulled back. But pulled back. Bigger volume than the last three days as well. I'm very familiar with MJNA. Got burnt twice is enough. I got you. I got you. I'm looking at that ITHUF though, Maria. And yeah, I'm looking at that ITHUF. Remember we made some money in that in the jockey club? So um, Palantir, I've done videos on this, so I still have a lot of my notes from my prior videos. I still like that. I'm probably going to have to do a midday parlay on Palantir as a follow-up. Um, so I'll think about it. Uh, do you think our current economic situation, possible inflation, market long in the tooth will affect the Chinese stocks a lot? You know, I don't know, Mr. Uh, Daniel Lemming. Um, I think that they are in the world in, of their own. You see stocks like CTRM. Um, I think that when the Chinese market really opens up for receiving more goods or the demand for goods increase, that's why I like CTRM. They're setting themselves up to be able to do the business with the Chinese market. You'll notice that other dry bulk shipping companies are on the move as well for the same reason. Uh, they're ramping up. CTRM is a low dollar penny stock that's got the ability, if they build up their shipping the way that they are, to take on a lot of business. And that, that's what I feel about it. Right? That's why I like CTRM. Um, so... I still think that the Chinese stocks can do what they do. And a lot of times, it's like the Indian stocks. They're in the world of their own. They really are. So I don't know. I don't know. Ride is one of my other stocks that I'm looking at possibly of being uh, overshorted. I'm going to come up with a listing of stocks, a video of stocks, uh, or looking at some of these stocks that could be short squeeze candidates. And Ride is one of them. Ride is one of them. Uh, I haven't looked at Go EV. Uh, mixed videos. I won't do that today. But again, you can look at a um, a stock analysis report. Roblox, leisure. There it is. Leisure again. I don't care what leisure it is. Keep your eye on leisure. Anything. Uh, Roblox going up. Hit a new high yesterday. Good earnings must have been because the stock's price has been moving up since. If you own it, leave it alone. If you don't, I would go 12 cents higher than the high. And the last stock I've got is Sensionics. This is a stock that I've talked about on YouTube as well. Uh, this company is going after type 2 diabetes of like which I have, having an implanted device so that you don't have to prick your fingers as much. You still will have to prick your fingers to, um, to, to, to what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not moderate the machine, to oh. calibrate the machine. Thank you, Joey, for being here. All right, and um, right now, moving averages are not good to use when a stock is moving sideways. Let's go look at the stochastics. Where does the stock sit? Currently, it's overbought. Be careful with it. All right, I own Sensionics as well. All right, every stock that I talk about that I own, I always try to let you know that I own it because I don't want anybody to think that I'm pumping any stock. That's why I'm clear when I tell you that stuff. 
All right, so that was the last stock. This tough, this stock's been a tough stock, but I think, again, I've got my own reasons, and I've talked to you in the videos about why I like stocks like Simtionics, like CTRM, like Tonex Pharmaceutical. All of these stocks have been tough stocks to sit through, but I've given you a reason to at least consider it. Whether you're in them or not is up to you. All right, with that, folks, I'm done. Man, that was a lot of talking. I talked a lot. Ooh, what's your feel on Kara? Rob, I'm not going to look at, uh, it seems like I'm not going to look at Go EV or Kara today, man. I'm not going to look at either one of those today. Kara, can anyone give me, all right, fine. You're new. Hold on, hold on. Put it back over here, Joey. Sigh. And you just, you just hit my heartstrings by saying you're new. All right. So let's go look at Kara. I got suckered into you doing it. I'm a sucker for you guys. I love you guys to death. <sighs> Woo! I'm not feeling it. Um, I, I I don't know what I don't know what made you get into it. So I don't know what this was. I don't know what the news was on the stock. Um, I'm not feeling it. Uh, and right now, sideways move, moving averages are not going to help me. Go put on stochastics. The stock was overbought. It's graph pulling back. Blood pressure go up. And Joey says the graph makes his blood pressure go up. I'm not feeling this stock. I don't know what made you get into it. Uh, Maria already helping you out, Rob, saying that Kara not so good. Um, so I'm, I'm not feeling that. That's all. Mark's, Mark says we love you too, Glenn. Yeah. And, you know, Rob, welcome to VV Nation, bro. All right. As a new investor to the market, welcome to VV Nation. That's why I pulled that out for you. That's why I pulled the eye. I, if you're in it, this is the face I'm going to give you. And then I'm going to give you this. Yowch! And then I'm going to go. Holy smokes. And then I'm going to go. Good googly muggly. All right. Hopefully that helps you. Ho hopefully that helps you, Rob. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob, talk to me. Does that help you? And Does that help you answer your question? Did I help you answer your question right there? Let me know before I go. Did they, mm -hmm. Let me know before I go. Did that help you, man? Oh, he did? Okay. So, <laughs> mixed videos. No, I'm not going to do another one. I, I know. I did one. I'm not going to be arena. Uh, I'm not going to do another one. Next week, I'll be here. We'll try to get some more of your stocks in here. I'm going to specifically start looking for new people. I have to put some of your stocks up there. All right, we can still got 200 plus. Thank you, go. How many, how many likes did we get? I didn't get to 200. It's all right. It's all right. If you like this comment, if you like this content, folks, hit the like button. I want to get this kind of stuff out, especially on the segment that I did on AMC. Folks, I'm all about keeping it real. I, and um, I think it's so important that People tell you what you need to hear, not hype up a stock. Whether it's GME, whether it's AMC, whether it's BlackBerry, whether it's Nokia, all of these meme stocks, there is a movement. But if you are the diamond hands that know that you think that this stock is going to go to $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, I want you to think about it in the back of your mind. Can the stock maintain that? And if it does, man, I'm on board. I still got 250 shares. If it does that, I'm riding the rocket with you. But I ain't being the diamond hands. If I see an opportunity to make a good piece of money on a trade, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And I'm not telling anybody out there to sell anything. Not at all. You do what's good for you. And everybody in this room invests differently. Understanding what's going on in the market is why we start off with the market overview every week. Inflation is an issue. I gave you that nice, pretty picture of what happens with inflation and, and the causes and, and the downside of that. This is the information that you need as an investor to make better decisions. So I ain't the hype guy. I'm just not. And there's a lot of them out there that comes on and go, yeah, baby, you see the squeeze and ah! and they drink the monsters and the Red Bulls, I'm just drinking coffee. My job is to educate you. I'm gonna also entertain you in the meantime. My job is to educate you, and that's what I want you guys to do, all right? So I see the diamond hands out there. In, uh, in, in, in Ovio, 
not the time for it below. And I love that you guys talk to a lot of the new people in here to help you out. You guys are awesome. VV Nation is a powerful place. This is why I like for you guys to hit the like button to get this stuff out there. All right. I'm done. I talked a lot. Right, Joey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Joey says I talked a lot. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, I love you guys to death, not just for subscriptions, folks. If you Subscriptions is just the other side of it. Love for you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. Until the next time, adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Asalam, shalom, namaste, yasu, see ya.